my name is Michael Smith, and today we're going to talk about the right way to add noise into your texture. So a really common technique that you've probably seen before in my videos or other videos is you have some texture, you've got your texture coordinates, and it's looking very regular and you want to make it wavy. Um, if you have built-in textures, if it's just this simple as the wave texture I'm using here, there's a built-in distortion, which effectively is doing what I'm going to describe here. Um, but if you've made your own texture, uh, out of something more complicated, you may not have an easy way to do this and you need to do it yourself. And the way that you usually do that is you go to Add, Texture, Noise Texture, sometimes people use Musgrave. Uh, you put the input uh, of the same coordinate system and then you do Add and the magic is you do Mix RGB and you mix the output of the noise into your texture and then you can use the factor to add more or less. But you're going to see, if you just do mix, it's moving everything down into the left, which, depending on your texture, may cause some problems. And I've seen people solve this various ways without really explaining why that is. Uh, so, for instance, if you, if you change it to multiply, that sort of works, but all of these have various problems. So let's pick multiply. So if I do this, so the center's in the center, but the, the effect is more intense as we go outwards, and it seems to be scaling outwards. So that's not really right either. What I want to do is add noise. I don't want to rotate, uh, sorry, translate or scale my texture. So what's happening and how can I fix it? So let's go to mix. So what mix does is just a weighted average. And we'll implement that separately so that you can see what's happening. So what we're going to do to get a weighted average, we're going to start with a normal average. So add converter vector math. We're going to change that to scale. We're going to take our coordinate system. We're going to divide it by two. We're going to take our noise, select this, shift D to duplicate, take our noise coordinates, divide those by two, multiply by 0.5, add converter vector math, and we're just going to add these two together, and that's going to give us the average. So if you remember from math, you take some number of items, in this case two, you add them together and you divide by the number of items. You can also do that by just preemptively dividing by the number of items, so divide by two for each and adding them together. So this gets us an average. The problem is that's already too much. I don't, I don't want this much uh, noise. I want less noise. And so with the factor control in mix RGB, what you're doing is doing a weighted average. And so a weighted average is instead of multiplying both by 0.5, you still need them to add up to 1. You still need 0.5 and 0.5 in this case add up to 1. But you could say have 0.8 and 0.2 instead. So get mostly the original coordinates and a bit of the noise coordinates. And that's pretty easy to do too. So we're going to do add input value. Uh, so when this value is zero, if we're doing like the FAC controller on MixRGB, we want it to all be the original coordinate system. So that means I want to multiply the noise by zero, and then I want to multiply this by one. And the way I'm going to do that is add converter math, and I'm going to subtract uh, this value from one. So when it's zero, the subtracted value is going to be one, so we're going to get all the original coordinate system. And if we move it to 1, what we're going to get is 0 up top and 1 at the bottom. So we're going to get all the noise, which is what the fact does. So if I move this to point 2, effectively what I'm getting Oops, did this backwards. There we go. Effectively what I'm getting is 0.8 of the top. Uh, and 0.2 of the bottom. So I'm getting a bit of the noise and mostly the coordinate system. So it's moving down at the left. Why is it moving down at the left? Well, this is pretty straightforward, uh, actually. So let's take all of this and move it out of the way. If I just take this object coordinate system and let's say I just add a constant value into the coordinate system everywhere. So rather than adding random noise, I just add a constant value. Well, if I add zero, uh, give it one second to load in, nothing will happen. But if I start adding a value, there you go, moving down to the left. Why is that happening? Well, if you think about it, this value in the center was 0, 0, right? So that's why the center of the circle was there. But if I add 0 0.5, 0 0.5, what was negative 0 0.5, negative 0 0.5 is now 0, 0. So that's where the center is going to be. And similarly, what was 0, 0 is now 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So we've pulled in some point that used to be over here and brought it into the center. The reason that this applies to the noise texture mixing in is noise texture is, is producing a value between 0 and 1. And so in some cases it's 0, but in all cases where it's non-zero, it's somewhere between 0 and 1. And so what you're doing in is adding in effectively a translation and down into the left. 
So the easy way to fix this is to take your vector math, uh, control D to, to duplicate, change this, oh, dropped it on the wrong thing. Let me undo that. There we go. On the output of the noise texture, change this to add, and then add minus 0.5 minus 0.5. So now what happens is on average, it's going to be minus 0.5 to 0.5. So on average, it's going to be zero. So although individual points will move down in the left, top to the right, everywhere, they're not going to move as a whole and translate your diagram down into the left. So if I play with this factor, even as I increase it, things still stay centered where they were. So that's really nice. Well, hold on though, why did multiply work? So if go back to the beginning, one thing that people will sometimes do is use mix RGB multiply. So let me delete all this stuff. So that worked, but in a way that wasn't super helpful, right? So let's take object, put it back in, add converter, oh, sorry, color, mix RGB. When I got rid of my texture, add texture, noise texture. And let's change this to multiply. Okay, so the reason that this works is that when you do a multiply, the center stays in the center because zero, zero times anything is going to be zero, zero. So no matter how much I multiply in this value of the noise texture, the center will always be the center. So why is it scaling in this weird way? Well, again, I mean, if you just add a constant value in, what's it going to look like? So let's go to add converter vector math and let's do multiply and let's do add input value. Okay, if we multiply everything by zero, obviously we don't get anything. If we multiply everything by one, we get the original. If I multiply by the less than one, what it's going to do is expand out those rings, right? So for instance, if we're at 0.5, then what used to be, let's say, 1, 1 over here in the top corner is now going to be 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So the ring that used to be inside at 0 0.5, 0 0.5 is now going to move outwards to the outside. So the net effect is that I'm scaling the circles uh, and the coordinate system as I go below one uh, in, in, to make it larger. And if I go above one, now I'm making it smaller. Well, so the same thing applies with this noise texture. So when I multiply in the noise texture, well, it's between zero and one, so it's all below one. So the net effect is that it's going to scale your texture as a whole. So what I usually do when I want to add noise is I add it in uh, using a vector math, and then I add in the the minus 0.5 minus 0.5 so that I can center it at, at between minus 0.5 and positive 0.5 so it doesn't translate and then without multiply I'm not getting the scaling. So that's what I recommend you do. Uh, hopefully you learned something.